We appreciate you joining in, in with us today. You're a research associate of the Center for Subsurface Energy and Engineering in the department of the um, in our Department of Petroleum and Geosystems Engineering at the University of Texas, Austin. He has 11 years of experience in surfactant flooding formulation in EUR. His research focuses, discuss, focuses on ultra-low IFT producing surfactants with oil, acaline, surfactant polymers, flooding, surfactant polymer flooding, encapsulation of aqueous fluids, and, so, and superhydrophobic silica nanoparticles and controlled release of encapsulated hydrophilic materials and perform polymeric materials, particles for conformance control. Wow, definitely outside of my, my area of expertise. I apologize for that. Um, he was awarded the 2019 um, C CSEE Staff Excellence Award. He received his master's degree from chemistry in the Trapuvan University in Nepal, and in 1996, and his PhD in chemistry from Bowling Green State University, Ohio, in 2010. All right, Dr. Panthi, thank you very much. The floor is now yours. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Pars, for the introduction. So, can you see my slides? We can see your slides. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my immense pleasure to present my research work in this graduate seminar series. All the presenters in this series are well renowned names, so I feel proud to be here. But at the same time, uh, I'm feeling somewhat nervous. I would like to thank Dr. Bala for his uh, uh, recommendation for me to present in this seminar. It is a great opportunity to the research associates and uh, postdocs to explore their research work. I would like to thank Dr. Kishor Mohanty for having me in his research group for the last 11 years and for mentoring me in various UR projects. So I would also like to thank Dr. Uh, Upali Oyraswarya for his mentorship in the area of surfactants in UR. Uh, today, so today I'll be talking, uh, so today I'll be talking about different surfactants in UR and uh, how they reduce interfacial tension with oil, uh, basically to get ultra low IFT between oil and water. Also some uh, phase behavior formulations, uh, then also some core flood by using such best formulations to show the, to show how effective are these surfactants, uh, surfactant formulations. This is the outline of my talk. I'll briefly tell the background and UR methods, then also surfactants in UR, then common surfactants that we use in our department for UR. Then I'll uh, show the experimental results of phase behavior and core flood of three different reservoirs. And I'll conclude my talk from each reservoir um, and I'll have overall conclusions. So uh, we know all of the reservoirs, they are under pressure. So they have some internal pressure and uh, because of that internal pressure, some of the oil uh, would be recovered if we have like we dig a uh, oil board. So that recovery we call primary recovery. And about 15% oil can be recovered by primary recovery. After primary recovery, after a uh, reservoir is depressurized, we have to pressurize the reservoir to get more oil out. For that, either we use water or we use natural gas, and we can get extra 20 to 40 percent oil out. These both methods, they are conventional methods. After secondary recovery, whatever method we use to get more oil out, that is called tertiary recovery or enhanced oil recovery. So enhanced recovery, that is UR, refers to the reservoir processes that recover oil not produced by conventional process. And that is basically on the basis of reducing viscosity of oil to get more oil out. So there is widespread interest in UR methods is there is continuous decline of conventional oil reserves and increasing demand of oil in the globe. So uh, here I'm showing different UR methods, such as thermal method, uh, chemical UR, gas UR, and other methods. Thermal methods further divide into different methods, but anyway, the idea is the thermal energy lowers the oil viscosity, specific gravity, and uh, IFT, interfacial tension. Thereby, it facilitates oil to move, to move towards the production zone. So that's how it uh, recovers more 
oil. But this is not economic process. This is basically used for a thick oil, I mean viscous oil. So another is gas UR. So in gas UR, that is further divided like maybe CO2, nitrogen, or flue gas, or hydrogen. So in gas UR, the gas mixes with the trapped oil and causing the oil to expand and dissolves from the reservoir rock and creates a miscible zone, which allows uh, more oil production. But uh, there are some limitations of this process, such as gravity override, channeling, and poor mobility. And because of that, so there would be early gas breakthrough and other methods such as a microbial here some microbes are injected so that might help for the discussifying oil as well as uh, it can be used as mobility control as well as some acoustic or ultrasonic that is based on sonication and which also reduce viscosity of oil in general the idea of enhanced oil recovery is to making oil thinner less viscous so uh, basically i'm going to talk about chemical EOR and in chemical EOR basically I'll be talking about surfactants in enhanced oil recovery. So why surfactants in EOR? So surfactants they boost off the oil recovery by different methods such as by lowering IFT lowering interfacial tension as well as mobilizing residual oil, by weightability alteration by changing weightability, by uh, making foam generating foam and by emulsification. But there are some challenges such as the uh, high price of surfactant. So it costs about $2 per uh, pound. And surfactant, they can be inst inst unstable at harsh condition, at high temperature, high serenity, basically in presence of divalent ions. And uh, surfactant adjustment would be high most of the cases so that we have to inject more surfactant. So these are the challenges. So surfactant, they solubilize immiscible liquids or gas. For example, here we have surfactants in water. So we can see this hair. Basically, surfactant, they have two parts, hydrophilic hair and hydrophobic tail. So this is hair group. So it, this is hydrophilic. That's why it tends to come towards water. But hydrophobic tail tends to go away from water. That's why. So they are sitting in surface. Uh, that's why they are kind of uh, uh, kind of interacting with both oil and water and they are reducing surface tension. And this air is hydrophobic. That's why hydrophobic part that is uh, uh, that is like uh, going towards the air. If we replace air with oil, the case would be similar. So here also a hydrophobic tail that is that goes towards oil and hydrophilic head goes towards water. That's why it's kind of binding both oil and water. So if surfactant, they are more hydrophilic, they tends to go towards water. That's why they take some oil towards water. If hydrophobic, some of the oil, water can go towards oil that we call type 2. But if they are surfactant, they are kind of balanced, then some of the oil can be moving towards water, some of the water can be moving towards oil. In that case, we can make middle phase that can give the ultra low IFT. So we, our main target is to get ultra low IFT by using different surfactants. So surfactant, they are surface active and basically uh, they have two uh, parts, basically, as I said, hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. And surfactant, they are categorized into four main groups, such as non-ionic. So here, like this is hydrophilic head, but it doesn't have any charge but this is hydrophobic tail, carbon, carbon, same. For example, there are many examples, but alcohol ethoxylate, this is one of the examples here. Another anionic, so negatively charged, uh, uh, hydrophilic and uh, carbon, carbon, same hydrophobes. So for example, STS, sodium dodecyl sulfate. Another cationic, uh, positive charge, hydrophilic. So for example, CTAB, so CTAB, that is basically uh, uh, C16 uh, and the ammonium group. And another category is amphoteric, having both positive and negative charge in the same molecule, such as lauryl betaine, it has ammonium group as well as carboxylate group. Now, hydrophilic uh, lipophilic balance. So this SLB basically is the number is given to the surfactant, how much the surfactant 
will interact with oil. For that, there are different methods, but Griffin's method is quite popular. So according to this method, HVLB can be calculated by using this formula, 20 multiplied by ms by m, where ms is the molecular mass of hydrophilic part, and this m is total molecular mass. So maximum HVLB number is 20, according to uh, his uh, Griffin's method. So if uh, the number is more than about eight, they are hydrophilic. If less than about eight, they are hydrophobic. So to make oil in water emulsion, generally we use surfactant uh, uh, or surfactant blend, which has the uh, uh, which has the SLV of eight to sixteen. And to make water in oil emulsion, basically uh, surfactant that is in the range of uh, SLV that is in the range of four to six. So this HLB is the hydrophilic lipophilic balance, and this value is given to the surfactant. But uh, we are always looking for emulsion formation to get ultra low IFT. And emulsion is the property of system, not the property of surfactant. And to get the emulsion, there are different factors they are playing roles, such as oil, salt, water, temperature. That's why SLB uh, of surfactant is not only factor to determine the ultra low IFT between oil and water. Similarly, there is another quite popular term that is SLD, hydrophilic lipophilic deviation or hydrophilic lipophilic difference. So here, if the number SLD is less than zero, then we get type one. So here we can see a uh, surfactant, they are surrounded and here hydrophobic part is towards oil and hydrophilic part is away from oil that we call oil in water emulsion, type one emulsion. And just opposite is type two emulsion that is water in oil emulsion. In that, in this case, SLD is greater than zero. So if SLD equals to zero, then we get type three, mostly ultra low IFT. So here we can see if some of the oil is solubilized here, we get type one, just opposite some of the water is solubilized here in oil, that is type two. If some of the oil is solubilized in water and some of the water is solubilized in oil, then we get third phase that we call middle phase. So, and in this case, we expect ultra low IFT. Still here is more oil, oil and more water. So all of the oil can be solubilized, all of the water can be solubilized, but for that, we need to have excess surfactant there. So in that case, we, get, we can get bicontinuous phase. So, and because in that time, this can form the layer of my cells, but uh, this is not basically good because we have to use a lot of surfactant uh, and that gives the viscous phase. So that's why that is not good for um, pore flood. So anyway, so microemulsion formation requires the balance of surfactant in oil and oil in um, surfactant in water interaction. And this balance depends on many factors such as surfactant, co-solvent, salinity, temperature, as well as oil. That's why this SLD is important, but this is not only factor to find the right surfactant for right oil. So these are the common surfactants. Um, uh, they are used in gas and oil field. Uh, so for example, alkyl aryl sulfonates or benzene sulfonate. This is the example alkyl and this is aryl. Or, or like alkyl ethoxy sulfate, this is alkyl group and ethoxy and sulfate. Or alkyl uh, ether may be carboxylate if carboxylate group is here. Or uh, here, like this is uh, alpha olefin sulfonate. Alpha has olefin CC bond, double bond or Garvey alcohol, so carbon number is big, maybe C28 or something like that, having propoxy and ethoxy group and sulfate, or internal olefin sulfonate, this is quite popular, very popular surfactants, so, or neodol ethoxylate, here R is 9 to 11 carbon carbon chain, or alpha terra sasol product, they are propoxy sulfates. So now common surfactant that we use in our department, basically uh, around, I think, 2009, 10, Dr. Pope and Dr. Upali, they started using this surfactant. They designed the surfactant in such a way like hard hydrophobe, meaning carbon-carbon chain that is attached to PO, propoxy group. And that propoxy group further attached to EO, ethoxy group, and that further attached to some like uh, hydrophilic part that is functional group, sulfate, carboxylate, and so on. So this is compatible with oil and this propoxy group is more compatible with oil and ethoxy group is more compatible with water and this function group is completely compatible with water. That's why this system might work better than other system without PO or EO group. And further they categorize large hydrophobe where the uh, 
carbon number is about C28, medium hydrophobe about C18, and short hydrophobe about C12. If the hydrophobe size is less than 8, they consider as co-solvent. These are the examples such as this is carbon carbon chain with propoxy group, ethoxy group, sulfate, carbon carbon chain, but it has a double CC double bond, that's why olefin uh, and propoxy ethoxy sulfate. So here TDA, tridecyl alcohol, 13 carbon and PUEO sulfate. So this is two ethyl hexanol. So total carbon carbon chain is uh, C8. That's why they consider it as co-solvent, not uh, surfactant. For last about four years, uh, we started in our group, in Dr. Mohanty's group, new co-solvent type of uh, surf, um, uh, surface active compounds. We named them not surfactant, but co-solvent uh, because we chose like uh, uh, compounds with carbon only C of C1 to 8. So for example, amine based or trimethylol propane based or polyamine based. These are some examples, for example, CH3O, 7PO, 20EO. So here, hard hydrophobe has only one carbon, phenol, six carbon, two ES, so six carbon, and so on. Now, alkaline surfactant polymer fluor, ASP fluor. So alkali, basically, the, what is the role of alkali that raises the pH, and because of that, it makes uh, basically uh, uh, alkali, it makes uh, soap, uh, in situ soap. Uh, by reacting with acidic part or acid, which is present in oil. And uh, uh, alkali also uh, increases the sulfate surfactant instability because sulfate, sulfates, they are mostly uh, instable at high temperature, but alkali that can help to some extent. Surfactant basically they lowers IFT uh, and they mobilize residual oil. And polymer, polymer increases the viscosity. That's why that helps for mobility control of uh, surfactant and water during core flow. Now, surfactant formulation development criteria. So, surfactant basically they must be stable uh, at a reserve high temperature. Surfactant they should give ultra low IFT uh, at or near optimum conditions. And surfactant, aqueous surfactant solution should be clear, should be stable at injection salinity. Surfactants should have low microemulsion viscosity and uh, they should form like microemulsion very fast, they should equilibrate very fast. And the surfactant retention or adsorption should be low uh, and they should be commercially available. Now, phase behavior study. So, to study phase behavior, basically, we most of the time we chose base brine is a formation brine is a base brine. Then we scan with either sodium carbonate or sodium chloride or other different salts. And serenity scan, we chose mostly 0 to 5 weight percent brine. And we chose our goal is one surfactant, but sometimes doesn't work. That's why we have to use two surfactant and even three surfactant mixer in presence of one co solvent. And total chemical concentration, we want as less as possible, but most of the time doesn't work. So approximately 1% or less. And mostly we do either 50% oil scan or 30% or 10% oil scan. So here I am showing one example. So here, let's say these are, these are pipette and up to this red line, let's say uh, we are adding just aqueous solution. And here only changing in different pipette is electrolyte, meaning let's say sodium carbonate. And uh, 2 ml, uh, this up above this line is oil. So black is oil, let's say green is water. So after mixing for a few days or after equilibrating, what happens, some of the oil is moving in water that's why we get emulsion this kind of emulsion we call type one or this is type one here just opposite happens some of the water is moving here we call type two but in this case some of the oil is moving here some of the water moving here that's why we get third phase or middle phase so when we get middle phase most of the time we get ultra low ift so our target is to get this middle phase in all of the phase behavior uh, results now, typical chemical flow. So after water flood, there is still like a oil bank. So to get oil out from that, so we want in general, we inject 30% of the rock, about 0.3 PV of surfactant. But in surfactant, we should have polymer there. And most of the time, we use alkali for ASP case. And we chose like optimum salinity condition. Then we inject 
1 PV, 1 pore volume of polymer most of the time, and followed by again 1 pore volume of injection brine. And we designed different sanitary gradients so that uh, surfactant, I mean, that uh, a brine, that whole system doesn't uh, form like type 2 region. So if that goes to type 2, then um, there would be more surfactant adjustment. That's why we design sanitary in such a way like the process is more robust and that decrease surfactant adjustment. This is the schematic representation I'm showing here. Uh, basically, we pump from outside, so we put like, uh, uh, let's say, pore holder and accumulators inside the oven. So, be, so in this yellow, uh, <coughs> yellow basically uh, square, we can see. So that is reservoir temperature we maintain. So accumulators and pore holder. Pore holder would be in vertical condition. Uh, so and uh, we have like uh, here pressure transducer we pressurize to certain pressure to prevent evaporation and fashion collector we collect uh, produced uh, liquid here and we pump from outside so that's how, how we do uh, pore flood now phase behavior and pore flood so basically uh, now onwards i'm going to show the experimental uh, results for experimental results for three different reservoirs so I'll talk about phase behavior and core flood to show the how effective are these phase behavior formulations. So now reservoir and oil properties. Basically, reservoir A, reservoir B, and reservoir C. So reservoir A and B, they are sandstone, and C is carbonate. And reservoir A has room temperature uh, condition and 70 C reservoir B and 100 C reservoir C. Permeability of reservoir A about 100 to 500 uh, milli darcy. This is quite high, 3 to 5 darcy reservoir B and about 50 to 500 milli darcy reservoir C. Oil viscosity, so about 17 centipoise at uh, room temperature. Oil A, this is very viscous oil, 370 centipoise at uh, 70 C, but at room temperature, the viscosity is 10,000 centipoise. This is very light oil, just 0 0.6 uh, centipoise at 100 degree Celsius. And this oil is very slightly acidic. This is highly acidic, and this is not acidic oil. Now, phase behavior strategy. So for this uh, oil, so basically, we wanted to make either ASP or ASP uh, formulations. Uh, <clears throat> but it had a lot of clay. That's why we wanted to make ASP formulations. So their surfactant adjustment would be relatively low. And surfactant, we can choose any anionic or non-ionic. And we can have even sulfate because the, because the temperature is very low. And, and uh, co-solvent also, we can choose any co-solvent because this is room temperature. That, that's why any co-solvent can work. Alkali, in case of ASP, we choose sodium carbonate. But ESP, there shouldn't be any alkali. Similarly, here, ESP or ASP formulation, our main target is to make SP anionic, non ionic, any surfactant, but carboxylate, we chose not sulfate because temperature is 70 sulfate uh, that doesn't work at high temperature. So, co solvent, we want relatively hydrophilic so that that would be stable because temperature is high and no alkali for SP and sodium carbonate for ASP. And here, our target is ESP formulation. So carboxylate is the surfactant because temperature is very high and the hydrophilic co-solvent we want uh, because temperature is high and no alkali because this is ESP case. Now reservoir A, so ASP flood of a medium light oil from a sandstone. So temperature, room temperature, I already talked about this for 100 to 500 milli darcy and viscosity is 17 centipoise at 25 degrees Celsius. This is the field brine composition, basically it has divalent ions also. The uh, salinity is about like 15,000 ppm brine salinity and corresponding salt is 1.48%. As we, our target is to make ASP as well as ESP. For ASP, we removed calcium magnesium and we prepared synthetic brine, which has the same uh, concentration. So I don't have much time to, to show all phase behavior. That's why I did more than 40 formulations but here I'm showing only few, about 10 formulations. So our target was to get um, uh, base formulations with commercially available surfactant. And most of the time, whatever we tried without this C2024 IOS, I didn't get good phase behavior. So 
I tried a lot, so I changed different surfactant combination, but it didn't work. And even I, um, I got one, I ordered one uh, compound that is exactly similar to 2024 IVS from Pyro that called ATSA, that also didn't work. Then uh, ultimately for this surfactant, Alpha Terra 145 ATS90, also structured later, without this uh, uh, IOS, only in presence of phenol 2 EO, the aqueous stability also very great. So up to 3% stable and sodium carnage can it give very great uh, formulation. That's why I was uh, sticking with this formulation to do the uh, core flaw. So though I have other many good formulations I found here without, so with alpha terra 135HS90 as well as alpha terra G20, so three or four different combinations. So I got few very good phase behavior but I was just sticking with this phase behavior, uh, this formulation for poor flood. So this is the best formulation I am showing here. So the hair scanning with sodium carbonate and wait, so surfactant concentration is 0.5% surfactant in presence of 0.5% co-solvent. And uh, salinity scan sodium carbonate from 1 to 3.258%. And here we can see here just some of the very less amount of oily solubilized here. And here is type two. So, but here very good type we can see. So in this region, there is ultra low IFT. So that's what we are looking. That's why I'm telling this is great for this. So I plotted the solubilization ratio and where we, here we can see a uh, solubilization ratio and about 50, which corresponds to IFT of very low, that is ultra low IFT. So with uh, sodium chloride also, I uh, did another uh, uh, scan, but with sodium chloride also showing good, but not as good as with sodium carbonate. And I have, I have another formulation here with 2024 IOS. Basically, this is the great formulation, but we didn't like to do core flood with this one because this IOS basically, cell was producing this IOS, but they stopped to synthesize this surfactant. So we did core flood basically here. I'm showing one core flood result uh, <clears throat> in uh, reservoir rock. So total length is about 22 cm and diameter 1.5 inch. For humidity, we got 91 mil C and pore volume 64 ml and initial oil saturation 56%. This is the injection sequence. So water flood we did with field brine and ASP, we, we used uh, surfactant and co-solvent mixer. But uh, in phase behavior, we use their nearby water that we call Bors Creek water. And we had to use 2900 ppm SAB 10x. This is the polymer we used, also the stocks are later, uh, uh, plus 2.6 percent sodium carbonate. We use this extra sodium carbonate because at this condition, we got optimum salinity. And polymer flood basically, we removed surfactant from there and we use it slightly less uh, sort of, uh, uh, polymer here because we have less amount of sodium carbonate. This is uh, the structure of surfactant and sab 10 x that is basically mixture of acryl amide, sodium acryl amide, tertiary butyl sulfonate, ATBS and B-vinyl biolidine, so NBP. This is the core flood result. Here I am plotting in this uh, y axis basically cumulative, cumulative oil recovery, oil cut, and residual oil saturation, and in x axis, pore volume injected. And this blue basically represents the cumulative oil, uh, or cumulative oil recovery. This green oil cut, and, and this uh, pink basically shows the residual oil saturation. And uh, this uh, basically uh, Purple color shows uh, the pressure drop. And here we can see when we injected water, gradually more and more oil is recovered. And after injecting about almost 2.4 PV of water, we get about 40% oil out. So after that, we injected 0.5 PV of ASV slug, followed by more than 2 PV of polymer. So then here, pressure drop started to increase and it increased to about like 23 PSI, something like that. And again, came down a little bit and became stable at about 17 PSI. 
and cumulative oil recovery we got it about 94 percent and here we can see there is very good uh, oil bank so oil cut is very good here so i didn't show other core plots here basically i did four different core plots and here i am showing the cumulative oil recovery so at the end of the plot about 93 percent about 90 percent about 94 and 96 percent basically the basically the change i made here is different brine i used so because their field was very big so that's why their brine different three four different brine they were provided that's why we use different brine and we conducted core flood but in all cases we got at least 90 percent cumulative recovery at the end of Flood, 90 to 96 percent that's why this is very successful flood so in conclusion of this uh, reservoir basically we obtained few great asp as well as esp phase behavior formulations with commercially available surfactants and we conducted four core floods with one of the best formulations and the water flood recover about 45 percent oip original oil in place and overall recovery at the end of flood was at least 90 percent now another reservoir that is reservoir B. So chemical flood of a viscous oil with noble surfactant. So reservoir temperature 70 degrees Celsius per unit to 3 to 5 Darcy. Sandstone reservoir, oil viscosity 370 centipoise and highly acidic oil with acid number 4.5. And water salinity is very less, less than one wave per only 9,000 ppm. So this is the brine composition and about 9000 ppm and corresponding salt about 0.96 percent so here also i did many phase behaviors here i am showing some basically as i talked before like we basically wanted to study about co-solvent type of uh, chemicals i just use these for example two years compound phenol compound or iv or uh, so alive compound or theta or DIPA. so all they have are hydrophobe where carbon carbon length is less than C8. And here I got very good phase behavior only with phenol 7Q15. And these are all are uh, they are non-ionic surface active compounds, non-ionic uh, chemicals. They are not ionic. So similarly, I tried with other conventional surfactants also. So big molecule like TSP tristeryl phenol big molecule with large number of propoxy and ethoxy group sulfate as well as like abs also mixture of two surfactants i tried different surfactant mixture but uh, but big molecule also didn't help much but with very small molecule this is cell product only c9 11 8 u this also gave very good phase behavior so that's why i again stick with two formulations phenol 7 pure 15 u only one compound only one uh, compound one weight percent and another c 9 u only one compound, no co-solvent. So I started, I did four flood by using these uh, sur surfactants or chemicals separately. So this is the phase behavior with one phenol 7 pure 15 eo and sodium chloride scan ESP. So you can see we don't see any type 3, but uh, this is very great type 1. So in all vials, they look kind of identical. There is very wide range of very great type one region. And here, this is with uh, c 9 u another formulation with sodium chloride scan. So this is same uh, uh, sodium chloride scan I'm repeating again here. And exactly same thing basically with this surfactant, I did sodium carbonate scan also. But here, though oil is acidic, highly acidic, but sodium carbonate did not work. We can see here totally type two reason is found. The reason might be uh, sodium carbonate that basically reacted with acidic part, uh, I mean, uh, so acid of oil, and that might form two hydrophobic surfactant. That's why we didn't get very good phase behavior. So now pour flood with this surfactant, uh, basically we prepared sand pack. Uh, so the, the sand basic sand pack has the length of two foot long and diameter is internal diameter about 0 0.82 inch, permeability 12.5 liter with high permeability uh, and pore volume 80.6 ml. This is the pore flood. Again, I am plotting in X axis like cumulative oil recovery, oil saturation and y, uh, in y axis and in X axis pore volume injected. 
So uh, here we inject a little bit more water uh, because oil is viscous. That's why we are getting more oil out. So we inject up to 4 PV and uh, almost this is flat. So and water flood recover uh, about roughly about 48% oil out. So after that, we injected 0.5 PV SP slug followed by about 2 PV uh, polymer. And uh, so at the end of polymer flood, so we got almost oil out. We got we got 100% oil out, so there is nothing left. So we just wash the sand and we try to see whether there is any oil, but we didn't see any oil out. So that is so that's why this is very successful flood. And here we use basically polymer that is SPAM, and uh, the viscosity of SPAM is 8,000 ppm. Uh, so the oil viscosity is 370 centipoise and. Uh, our slug viscosity we made about 400 centipoids. So that's why to make about 400 centipoids at a reservoir temperature, we had to use 8,000 ppm SPAM. So the conclusion from this part is phenol 7 po 15 eu and c 911 eu they gave ultra low IFT, both with NaCl and sodium carbonate. So I'm sorry, not ultra low, very low IFT with sodium chloride. And sodium carbonate, but basically with sodium chloride, the uh, results was better. And water flood recovered about 50% original oil in place, and yes, we flood from this enol compound that recovered all oil out. And with this one, C9118U, I didn't show the core flood, but that also recovered almost all oil out. And surfactant retention from both flood, we got about 0.2 milligram of surfactant per gram of rock. So I have another reserve height that is carbonate at 100 C. So SP formulation for high temperature carbonate. Permeability is 50 to 500 milli uh, and uh, oil is very less viscous and uh, this is not acidic oil. So here the brine salinity is about 32,000 ppm, this corresponding salt of that brine. And phase behavior basically it was very hard oil to deal with so i had to do more than 50 formulations and i'm not showing all formulations here only i tried with one surfactant uh, and one co-solvent did not work two surfactant did not work that's why i had to move to three surfactant combinations so here i'm showing two best formulations with tda 35 pu 45 pu carboxylate in presence of lower lb10 and this ios and co-solvent iba 1 pu 20 u this gave, gave very good result as well as with C28, 35 U, 50 U carboxylate in presence of same uh, sulf, uh, lower LB10, and so same another surfactant, IOS, and same co -solving. But in this case, basically, we got uh, optimum salinity at higher um, injection band. Basically, here our scan was different. We scan by diluting reservoir brine as well as by making reservoir brine more concentrated. Here, 140 percent, meaning we added more uh, like uh, so 100 percent brine, meaning reservoir brine, 140 meaning we added more uh, salt in the reservoir brine, and 80 percent meaning diluted reservoir brine, 80 percent of injection brine. This is the phase behavior result. Here we can see here type one here in this region, type three region. So this is very great formulation, and this is corresponding solubilization ratio. So solubilization ratio about 14, and the corresponding IFT is ultra low 0 0.0014 per cm. So in this case, basically core flood, we crossed uh, the reservoir core and we packed in uh, to make one foot long and uh, 0.82 inch uh, diameter. So sand pack, and we got permeability of 140 millimeter C and pore volume of 40. Uh, 4 ml. So this is the core flood result. Again, I plotted in the same way. Uh, and uh, here, so we can see the water flood. Uh, we injected water about 1.3 PV, and uh, we got uh, water flood recovery a little bit high. Uh, this is light oil, so we got about 66 percent. Then we injected yes we slug of 0 0.5 PV, and we. Uh, we designed polymer slug as a like polymer one and polymer two. Basically, here we change salinity gradient so 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 that we get better recovery. Uh, here we injected more polymer, but anyways, from let's say three PV onwards, it didn't uh, get any more oil out. 
So that's why total uh, basically effective polymer again is maybe more, not more than 2 PV. So overall recovery at the end of fraud is 99%. So this is also very successful fraud. So the conclusion from this fraud is uh, uh, we didn't get any good phase behavior with single surfactant or blend of two surfactants. That's why we had to blend of three surfactants to get the best, very good phase behavior. Or they are C28, 35 PO, 50 PO carosylate in presence of lower albutane and IOS. We got, got best formulation and we use this formulation for core flood. And by using this formulation in one core flood, we got water recovery 60% and overall recovery 99%. I didn't show other floods, but from another flood where we didn't change any cinematic gradient, just in seawater brine we used and we did flood. In that flood also, we got 98% oil recovery at the end of flood. That's why this is also very successful flood. So this is my last slide. Last slide. So here I'm just uh, I'm just trying to tell is like can we predict right ASPSP formulations based on previous work? So if we just talk about the uh, work that I showed today, so oil B is very viscous oil but very simple non-ionic formulation that gave very low IFT in as I compare all the formulations, all the different formulations I prepared. It did not require large hydrophobic. So oil B is highly acidic. This is really acidic 4.5 uh, uh, acid number, but uh, alkali didn't help. Alkali sodium carbonate that uh, quickly changed to type two. Best phase behavior formulation of oil C that did not work with other oils, which have similar properties of oil C, similar viscosity, acid number, salinity, temperature that I studied before, that I didn't talk today, but I studied before. Oil C and other similar light oils require large propoxy group for good phase behavior results. So it is not easy to predict the surfactant formulations for given uh, crude oil on the basis of experience in similar oils. So with this, like uh, I'd like to again thank uh, Dr. Mohanty and Dr. Upali for uh, mentoring me. So for for this, these uh, projects, and I'd like to again, like you know, uh, so I'd like to thank ONGC basically part of this talk, and basically ONGC funded us, and I'd like to thank everyone for listening me. Uh, thank you everyone, and now uh, I'm open for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Panther. We appreciate your uh, presentation and discussion with us today. I want to give an opportunity to graduate students to ask questions first. Any questions from our graduate students? Don't be shy. Anyone? All right. Okay, I'll open up. Any graduate students, any faculty, anyone with questions, please jump in. Dr. Del Shad. Yeah, hi, Krishna, a very nice talk. Um, Mike, actually, I have two questions. One, with your uh, three surfactant formulation and a co-solvent, do you also look at the cost of that formulation if he makes it to the field? So uh, basically, uh, that part, I don't know. Basically, that like, you know, company, they uh, like they were happy with our formulations and our result. And they asked like, you know, the price and everything. And we get information and we told them to contact two companies. And uh, I don't know after that, like, you know, whether they were really happy or not. But on the basis of, you know, our work and whatever we presented them, three different surfactant combinations, they were happy. But three, there are three different surfactants, but total concentration is not that high. Only the problem, maybe you know, like uh, logistic problem. I mean, mixing problem. Maybe the problem. Otherwise, you know, total concentration is not that high. And the chromatography separation. Basically, when I did like analyze this, I didn't see any chromatographic separation. That's why I think you know should be good and should be okay. And I think they should be. Happy. Thank you. So my second question is for the case of the viscous oil. And you mentioned that the alkali doesn't work. Yes. Um, 
And I know you mentioned that it actually pushes you to a type two uh, environment, which we don't like. Right. Uh, so, but you know, we always recommend adding alkali as a mitigation strategy for reducing the uh, retention of the surfactant. So right. what do you recommend for that case? Okay, that case, basically that reservoir was sense, uh, you know, like sandstone reservoir with uh, almost no clay, very less clay, and that is like, you know, very high perennial sandstone. So whatever formulation I tried, basically like they were uh, like, uh, they were telling like they are happy, um, they can easily, uh, uh, you know, like uh, they were telling like basically, uh, it's difficult to soften brine, right? That's why they were, I mean, they were telling they would be happy like with ESP uh, formulations also. And uh, in our like, you know, uh, lab scale, basically surfing adjustment also, we didn't get that high. Uh, but yes, it would be better if we get, uh, you know, uh, uh, ASP better formulations, but uh, uh, you know, I mean, whatever chemicals available in our lab, in our department, so all combination I tried, but relatively I got ESP formulation better and they were okay with that. That's why we, you know, use that formulation for core flower and retains also not that bad. So that's oh, the actually point. that's great. You know, I, I, I prefer SP over ASP myself. So that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much, Dr. Del Shad. Other questions? Do we have any other questions? All right, it looks like Dr. Panthe, I guess your discussion was perfectly clear for our attendees. Thank you. We do appreciate you taking the time to present to us and um, assisting. Sir, thank and, you, sir. It's, um, my pleasure. Like, it's my pleasure to present you know, in front of you in front of, you know, very big people like you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Everybody stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.